ions are shown with the symbol for the atom, which is the same as on the periodic table, and with the charge in the top right corner. As you can see, ions can have a positive or a negative charge. Their different charges also lead to different naming conventions. Positively charged ions keep the same name as their neutral parent atom. For example, a positively charged ion of aluminum retains the name aluminum. Negative ions are named differently. When naming negatively charged ions, the ending is changed to ide. For example, a negatively charged oxygen ion is named oxide, and a phosphorus ion is named phosphide. These positive and negative ions can form ionic bonds. These form with a metal and a nonmetal. And these ions form because of the opposite charges which attract each other. One sodium ion and one chloride ion can form a sodium chloride compound. Notice that in an ionic compound, the ions keep the same names as they had separately. The positive ion retains its atomic name, and the negative ion ends in I. Ionic compounds also need properly written formulas. This can be done by writing the charges of each ion with the positive ion first. For example, magnesium has a positive two charge, and fluorine has a negative one charge. The final charge of an ionic compound must always be neutral, so the positive and negative charges need to balance. This is done by changing the number of each ion in the compound so that the total final charge is zero. In this case, two negative one fluoride ions are needed to balance the positive two charge of magnesium. So the formula for magnesium fluoride would include one magnesium ion and two fluoride ions. Subscripts are added to signify the number of ions included in a compound. If the number of ions is one, then no subscript needs to be included. This is the case with magnesium. Many times when writing ionic compound formulas, the crisscross method can be used. For example, to determine the formula of calcium nitride, we can begin by placing the two ions and their charges next to each other. The calcium ion has a positive two charge, and the nitride ion has a negative three charge. Remember that the positive ion should always be first. Next, we can crisscross the charges to determine how many of each ion are needed to form a neutral ionic compound. This process tells us that we need three calcium ions and two nitride ions to make a balanced ionic compound.